excuse me. <laughs> How are you? Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy eighth Sunday after Pentecost to you all. Just some announcements. First of all, just a little bit about schedule this week. Vestry members, we have a meeting today at noon. That's on Zoom, so a link will be coming out here pretty soon. Uh, so vestry meeting today at noon. Centering prayer this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So centering prayer Tuesday at 7. We will have Wednesday Mass this week. Uh, it's also the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, so that's Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And then just a reminder, next Sunday, next Sunday is our outdoor liturgy. That'll be at 9 a.m. Remember, we're having the um, Masses outdoors at 9 to kind of beat the heat. Um, so it'll be at 9 o'clock next week. So 9 o'clock uh, next Sunday, Mass outdoors. Uh, li uh, ministry things that are happening. First of all, you might have saw as you came in, first of all, I'm very excited. I think we're running out of bulletin, so that's exciting. Um, but you may have seen when you came in a little handout flyer for Homeless Families Foundation. So uh, we know this coming school year will be a really important one for our, st our students all across the country as they start back into school full time after the pandemic. We wanna make it a good year for them. And so we're collecting back to school supplies uh, for Homeless Families Foundation through August the 8th. This is in your newsletter as well too, but if you want one of the paper copies, you can grab those on the way out. This is all the items that we are collecting. Uh, we are asked that you bring them back here uh, by August the 8th. There's a drop off there at the door of the church. You can also drop them off in the gray tote at the outside of the church if no one is here, uh, but you can just see all the great supplies. Uh, fill a backpack um, and drop them off to help Homeless Families Foundation as we get our kids back to school. Big thanks to Creation Care, and we asked for volunteers last week, and thank you all for coming out to do that. We actually even had three volunteers from New Albany Food Pantry who came on Wednesday. Um, our folks have been on squash bug patrol, uh, so we have a large amount of squash bugs. Uh, they're pretending to have their own little buffet outside, but we want to make sure we protect those, and so thank you to all of our um, our squash bug patrollers who just ushered them into a nice spa bath where they all went to meet our Lord. So thank you for that. Uh, so uh, Laura and Kathy and Bob Halsey um, and uh, Bob Hayes, as well as Chuck Talley helped this week. Stephanie Delicio as well too. Uh, we harvested tons of greens, cucumbers, zucchinis, green beans for a total of 87.5 pounds that went this week alone uh, to Gahanna residents in need to grin. We're up to probably close to 300 pounds right now out of the a garden and I think last year maybe we were at 10 pounds 20 pounds so that tells you how much uh, things have grown this year um, by your efforts and volunteers so thank you all so very much as we're getting back from the pandemic uh, we need to restart all of our liturgical ministry so it's time to get back as we come back into communal worship once again uh, to become uh, more active especially around the ministries that surround the altar um, there are plenty of opportunities for training and learning that will be coming, so do not be afraid. Uh, your parish needs you uh, to help with liturgical ministry. So which ones are we looking for? Altar Guild. It's really time to revise the Altar Guild. So if you've ever wanted to learn more about the sacred liturgy or felt tugged by the Holy Spirit to get closer to the altar, uh, this is a way to do it. We're going to do Altar Guild a little bit differently. Um, we're going to have a meeting on Saturday, July the 31st at 10 a.m. So the last uh, day of July, we will hold it here at 10 a.m. Uh, for those who have been Altar Guild members or if you feel the call to be an Altar Guild member, uh, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We wanna, we're going to gather more often to learn about the liturgy. So if you want to learn about the liturgy and the various things on the altar as well as the liturgical seasons and different things like that, I'll be leading us in a lot of formation work, uh, which will be kind of really cool. We'll be praying together as well as then ministering and getting things set up at the altar for the weekday mass as well as the weekend masses. Uh, so if you would like to join the altar guild, please see me. There's also sign-up sheets in the narthex of the church. You can sign up as well too. So if you ever thought about it, it's open to everybody. Uh, we would love to have as many people join us as possible at the altar guild. So if you're interested, please do that. Acolytes. As you know, um, Amy and Michael and Joey and Catherine have been our dutiful acolytes during this pandemic. Uh, they have done an incredible job at all the liturgies, but they need some help. If you notice, Michael's by himself today. Wah, wah. Uh, so we are going to need some help with the um, acolytes as well, too. So if you would like to get back to acolyting, uh, please make sure uh, that you sign up in the North Texas Church. Talk to me or even email the office. And then Eucharistic ministers. So we will be getting back to offering the precious blood here very soon, probably in August. 
Uh, so if you would like to resume your duties or be trained as a Eucharistic minister, sometimes known as a chalicist, that's options too. So altar guilt, acolytes, chalices, if you're interested in any of those, sign up sheets for the narthex of the church, speak with me or talk with the office um, and we will have trainings for all of those and then we're putting together the schedules that will come out for the fall. Let's gather our hearts and minds as we come to worship our risen Savior on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our, our worthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them, so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them, who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, 
and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physic physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. 
The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them and hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So as I kind of talked about last week, let's get our bearings in the liturgical year and in the life of the church. Because when the church presents us with readings or collects, right, the church is teaching us, right? So as I mentioned last week, for the last about six weeks, we've been reading exclusively from the Gospel of Mark. This is the year we actually will read Mark uh, from top to bottom. And during these six weeks, we had two themes. You remember that from last week? We've had two themes that have popped up. There's been a lot of healing. Mark talks about a lot of healing. At the end of June, he healed the woman with the hemorrhage for 12 years. He raised Jairus' daughter. The first week of July, which is actually the completion of this reading today, he sends the apostles out two by two, and they anoint people with oil, and they are healed. We hear today how they were laying out the sick, and anyone who touched even the hem of his cloak, which was the tallit, the tassel on his tallit, received healing. Then kind of intermixed by all that, we hear prophets. Remember that too? So there was a lot about prophets. Beginning of July, even when Jesus sent out his apostles two by two to heal, he goes to his hometown at Nazareth. They don't accept him. He couldn't even do any miracles there. He did say that he healed a couple people, but because they were so stubborn, and Jesus said a prophet is not without honor except his own town. And then last week we heard about the greatest prophet, John the Baptist, who... Lost his head for being a prophet. So we have two things, right? We have healing of the sick and we have prophets. And we talked about how they both are pointing to healing of the whole soul. Prophets really kind of get at the spiritual sickness of us. Our sinfulness that needs healing. And last week we spent the whole uh, sermon talking about the sacrament of reconciliation. And how that's a healing sacrament in the church because it heals soul. If you're like, what is he talking about? Go watch it last week. It was really good. So go watch it from last week. <laughs> this week, we're talking about the other main sacrament of healing for body and mind and emotions, the healing of the sick. The healing of the sick. First of all, let's talk about sacraments. Let's recap on what sacraments are. Sacraments are efficacious signs. That's a really big theological word. Efficacious signs means the signs produce the effect they say they're going to do. We used the example last week of a stop sign, right? So this kind of octagon piece of material that's painted red that says stop really big on it is a sign that causes most of us to actually stop, right? It brings about the effect that it's for. So the sign brings about the effect it's for. In our catechism in the back of the Book of Common Prayer, it says visible signs of invisible grace. You all probably have heard that before. Sacraments are visible signs of invisible grace instituted by Christ. Sacraments only have their power by Christ and his redeeming work and by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Instituted by Christ for his church, whereas the divine life, his life, is dispensed into us. That's a lot of flowery theological language. That Jesus is taking material elements and telling us how to use them and giving them power. And when the church does the sacraments, as Jesus says, they are efficacious signs. 
Grace is conferred by the sacraments, period. You don't have to hope for it. You don't have to wish for it. You don't have to have your fingers crossed when you receive it. It happens. That's the sacrament, all right? Today, let's look at the sacrament of the anointing of the sick and go to page eight, because you know how I've been doing all summer. We've been putting little quotes for you all. The material sign in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick is oil. This is olive oil, by the way. This is not car oil. This is olive oil that is used, the anointing of the sick. This oil is blessed by the bishop uh, during a special service during the church year called the Chrism Mass, where all of the oils of the church are blessed. Oil. Olive oil is mentioned in the scriptures like a hundred and some times was heavily used by people, especially during the time of Jesus and in the Middle East. It still is. As an Italian man, I'm pretty sure this is what my blood looks like. <laughs> All right. Olive oil. But let's look at olive oil from a spiritual and scriptural. If you go to page 8, I didn't put the first quote in it, but the first time oil is used in the scripture... ...or a reference to olive oil, believe it or not, goes back to Noah. Goes back to Noah. As the world was corrupted and full of sin and brokenness and sickness... ...you know the story. God washed away all of that sickness through the waters of the flood... ...and those eight people of Noah's family in the ark were saved. And to see if the waters were receding, Noah would send out a dove. What's the dove a symbol of? Holy Spirit, right? And eventually the dove brings back in its beak an olive branch. Notice the connection, the dove and the olive and the earth and the world being healed from its brokenness. So very early in scripture we hear olive oil, olive being attached to healing. The first time it's pretty specific as you see on page 8 at the very top is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 13. God will love you. He will bless you. He will increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the crops of your land, the grain, new wine, olive oil, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. God promises Moses when you get to the promised land, it's going to be filled with milk, honey, wine and olive oil. A symbol of their new covenant and relationship with God. One of the signs of them being back into the garden. Right? That's what all this symbolizes. Being pulled back into the garden. Being pulled from death into the very life of God. One of those signs would be olive oil. The promised land would be filled with olive oil. As we go further, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6. From the sole of the foot even to the head there is no soundness in it. <laughs> That's nice. Thanks, Isaiah. Wounds, welts, and open sores. They have not been closed, neither bandaged, nor soothed with oil. Olive oil, just by its natural properties as a creature of God, has all kind of health benefits outside the context of Scripture. Many of you are shaking your heads. Yeah, right? You know it, right? Whenever I would get a canker sore in my mouth, my Italian grandmother would give olive oil and just rub it in there. Right? Olive oil is antibacterial. All these new studies are done about olive oil and its effects on heart disease and diabetes and all kinds of things. But just as a natural creature, it has amazing health benefits. During the time of scripture, they would bandage wounds and anoint people with oil as a soothing remedy, especially over the wounds. Because of its antibacterial properties, remember, there's no neosporin, right, in, you know, first century. You, know, you didn't go to the CVS of Jerusalem during the time of Jesus to buy neosporin for your wound. They would cover it in olive oil and wrap it, right? Sometimes even with salt. That would probably felt really good too. But olive oil has a natural property for healing. You heard it today in the psalm. He anoints my head with oil. You notice oil covers, oil seals. It was used to anoint priests. It was used to anoint kings. For those who are praying in the daily office with us in morning prayer on YouTube... You've heard from Samuel this week. Samuel anoints David with oil. It was a symbol of the covering of God. I mean, when you think of oil, it's hard to get off, right? It covers, it soothes, it, sti it sticks. 
The healing love of God sticks and soothes and heals. When you get to Christ, oil is used to anoint the sick in a powerful way. We read, and this is I mentioned earlier, in the continuation that we had today, Mark chapter 6, verse 13. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Jesus tells the apostles in the Gospel of Mark, go out and anoint them with oil. This is Christ instituting the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And then we see it in full manifestation when Christ goes to the cross. And the night before, Jesus is suffering in which garden? Gethsemane. Gethsemane in Hebrew means oil press. For those who are going to the Holy Land trip, when you go to the Garden of Gethsemane, it is filled with olive trees. And the Benedictine monks who were still there actually collect the uh, olives and they make olive oil. It's a huge press. Olive oil didn't have to go through a huge lot of process back then. That's why it was used so much. Because literally you just squeeze the olives and produce the oil. Christ suffers in the midst of the olive. By his stripes, by his suffering, we are healed. He attaches even to his passion olive oil where he begins to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. The church has always understood this connection between Christ's saving death and resurrection and the power of the sacrament of the anointing of the sick because Christ has come to make us whole and to bring us back into the Father's house and to make us fully alive by his passion, death, and resurrection. That's the power. And the church knew that, which is why the next quote is from the letter of St. James, the Apostle James, where he is specific. Is there any sick among you? Summon the priests of the church... And they should pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise them up. And then notice the next line. If they have committed any sins, the sins are forgiven them. Notice the connection between the healing of soul and the healing of body. They go hand in hand because Christ wants to bring us wholeness. I put three quotes down there for you from the early church. And how the early church saw this sacrament. This comes from Hippolytus. And this goes back to about 215. 215. If someone makes an offering of oil. The bishop shall give thanks in the same manner as for the oblation of bread and wine. Meaning there's going to be a prayer just like we celebrate at the Eucharist. He does not give thanks in the same words of the Eucharist. But in a similar prayer saying sanctify this oil O God. As you give holiness To all who are anointed and receive it. As you anointed kings, priests and prophets. So that it may give strength to all who taste it. And health to all who use it. Notice the connection with the apostles. The bishop is the one who blesses it. But notice the prayer. That Christ sanctifies this oil to bring health and healing to those who receive it. This is an actual prayer of blessing of the oil that was used by Seraphim in 350. We beseech you, Savior of all humankind, you that have all virtue and power, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray that you send down from heaven the healing power of the only begotten Son upon this oil, so that for those who are anointed, it may be affected for the casting out of every disease and every bodily infirmity for good grace and remission of sin. And then Pope Innocent, the Bishop of Rome in 416, in the epistle of the blessed apostle James, if anyone among you is sick, let them call the priests. There is no doubt that this anointing ought to be interpreted or understood of the sick faithful who can be anointed with this holy oil. It is a kind of sacrament. So this sacrament of anointing of healing goes back all the way to Noah, commanded by Christ to his apostles and has continued in the church for 2,000 years. Where the church has taken oil that has been blessed by a bishop and has offered us an encounter with the healing power of Christ in mind, body, and spirit. We don't like to take advantage of this sacrament. For those of you who used to be Roman Catholics in this room, you were only taught that you could receive this sacrament right before you died. Sometimes known as last rites. In the Italian world, oh Lord, you never wanted to get this because that means it was your bus ticket out. That's not how Jesus established it. It's meant for our healing. And when you are sick in any way, in body, 
if you're facing a surgery, if you're facing a health crisis, come be anointed. If you're suffering from some form of mental trouble or stress or sadness, come receive the anointing oil. We have services. We're going to anoint oil with people today. Part of this liturgy is going to be the anointing and the sacrament of anointing here very soon. You can always contact any priest. I love to anoint. If you have any, just say, Father, I need anointed. I will meet you anywhere. I've anointed people in parking lots. I have actually anointed people at bars. Not just in hospitals or hospice centers. If people have needed anointed, we call for the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do as Christ has taught us and anoint. Take advantage of the sacrament. Christ has offered us all of these things to give you strength, to give you healing. Not just necessarily of body. It's often in our, in our modern world, we're just looking at, you know, we want the miracles that you see on TV with Benny Hinn. And believe me, I have seen those with the anointing of oil. I have. But the deeper anointing is the anointing of the soul and the healing of the soul. Because our bodies are decaying. They will be resurrected on the last day. They will look like Christ. But the interior healing is the most powerful part. Which is why I want you to look at the closing prayer for the anointing of the sick. On page 11, here in a few short minutes as we pray together. And by the way, when it's time for us to pray, I need you all to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to be present. Make this room thick with his presence for healing. Pray for those who are coming up to be anointed. Normally, if this wasn't kind of in the midst of the pandemic, I would all have you come up to lay on hands just as I lay on hands. But because of where we are right now, um, I'm going to ask you to pray from your seat. But pray from your seat and pray for healing. When you come up, I will take the oil and I will anoint you where you were anointed at your baptism. That the healing effects of what is started here in the font where you've received eternal life, continue in your life, in your mind, body, and soul. I lay my hands upon you. Notice there's a laying on of hands. There's a power that comes through. I anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the words that you were baptized in. I pray that our Savior Jesus Christ may sustain you, that he may drive away sickness of body, mind, and spirit, just as we've been seeing in the scriptures, and give you that victory, the victory over death, the victory of life and peace, which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forever. So as you come up, just come up like you're going to receive communion. I will anoint you and then head back to your seat. And then over everyone at the very end on page 12, I pray, that, pray this final prayer. As you are anointed outwardly with this holy oil, so may our Heavenly Father grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. Of his great mercy, may he forgive you your sins. Notice the connection with forgiveness of sin. Release you from suffering. Restore you to wholeness and strength. May he deliver you from all evil. Preserve you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In these moments before we stand up and profess our faith. And then begin the rite of anointing of the sick. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to come upon us. To bring us his healing power. Just as we've been praying and reading in the scriptures. As Christ healed all those who came to him. That we may have new life. That we may be filled with his power and his Holy Spirit and receive the healing of mind, body, and soul that he came to bring us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God.
God and not man, of one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in the grave. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. God the Son, you came that we might find life and might have it more abundantly. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled that they may be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance, to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit to those who are bereaved. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. You are the Lord who does wonders. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Let us pray. Open us to your healing power, O God. We entrust ourselves to your care knowing that you are doing for us and for all the world far better things than we can ask or imagine. With you as our companion and guide, strengthen us to hope for all that is good and to fear no evil. For your love is stronger than death and your faithfulness reaches to the heavens. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and to the ages of ages. Those come forward who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries. Come on up. Birthdays when? Monday. Monday. All right. Oh, Lydia, you're going to come join us for prayer. Come on up. This has been a while since you've done this. We're great to have you back. Let's pray. Yeah. Yeah. God, our Heavenly Father, look with love upon these, your daughters, who begin another year in your name. Lord, fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. Bring them healing from head to toe in their whole life during this upcoming year. Bring them to that life that you wish for them and draw them closer into your love. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. Thanks, Lydia. It's good to have you up here. Yeah. Healing is always attached to the forgiveness of sins. Let us ask the Lord to forgive our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. 
and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Sisters and brothers, we are gathered here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is present among us. As we heard in the gospel today, the sick came to him for healing. Moreover, he loves us so much that he died for our sake. Through the apostle James, he has commanded us, are there any sick among you? Let them send for the priests of the church and let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have forgiven, committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven them. Let us therefore commend our sick brothers and sisters to the grace and power of Jesus Christ, that he may save them and raise them up. I invite those who wish can now come forward as you would for communion, if you wish to receive the anointing of the sick. Lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Lord Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of mind, body, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away sickness of mind, body, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God, both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away sickness of mind, body, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, will drive away sickness of body, mind, and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. I 
lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, Drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. Lydia, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you Drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you. Drive away all sickness of body, mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away sickness of body, mind, and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve God and rejoice both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, 
drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace, which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hand upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body and mind and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you. Drive away sickness of body, mind and spirit. And give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you. Drive out all sickness of body and mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away sickness of body and mind and spirit, and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and forevermore. Amen. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praying that our Savior Jesus Christ will sustain you, drive away all sickness of body, mind and spirit and give you that victory of life and peace which will enable you to serve and rejoice in God both now and evermore. I don't have oil tunnel yet, so if anyone else, we good? As you are outwardly anointed with this holy oil, so may our Heavenly Father grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit of his great mercy, may he forgive you all your sins, release you from suffering, and restore you to wholeness and strength. May he deliver you from all evil, preserve you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace the Lord be always with you. Thanks.
that was good. All right. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father almighty creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave. 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people. In your words spoken through your prophets. And above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary. To be the savior and the redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with Saint John the Baptist, with Saint Mary Magdalene, with Saint James and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual fruit of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you. Witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.